So vibrato is when you change the pitch of the note by rolling the finger back along the string. So if I play a C sharp, vibrato sounds like this, or without vibrato sounds like this, and with vibrato sounds like this. So that movement of the finger on the string is basically made by pulling the base of the first finger back towards the scroll. So the base of the first finger rests against the side of the neck and it slides back towards the scroll. And as it slides back, it pulls the top joint of the finger that you're playing with, it pulls that joint flat, or flattens the joint slightly, and as that joint flattens, the finger rolls back along the string and that changes the pitch. And then you return the finger to its playing position. So vibrato is always starts on the in-tune note, <clears throat> and then you go flat of the in-tune note, and then return back to the in-tune note. So we never go sharp of the in-tune note. We always start from the in-tune note, we let the finger roll back towards the scroll, and then we return it to its in-tune position. And the movement is made keeping, the thumb is always kept still, and the base of the first finger slides back towards the scroll, the top joint of the finger flattens, and the finger rolls back along the string. So that is the basic vibrato movement. In this exercise I'm going to talk about an arm vibrato. There's also um, wrist vibrato which is very similar, um, it's just a question of where the movement of the hand originates from. So I'll just briefly talk about this but in the exercise I'm going to demonstrate arm vibrato for simplicity. If you find a wrist vibrato easier then um, do the exercise in the same way but let the movement of your hand originate from the wrist. So I'm just going to show you quickly the difference between arm and wrist vibrato. So arm vibrato, you pull the finger back and forth by moving the arm from the elbow. In wrist vibrato, you do the same thing, but you let that movement come from the wrist. So the arm stays still and it's the wrist that moves in a sort of waving motion. I'm going to talk about arm vibrato because that's what I do, um, but uh, lots, lots of people use a wrist vibrato. Um, there's no right or wrong, um, sometimes it just depends what, you've, what you're taught. Um, when you first learn, some people just find one easier than the other. So there's no right or wrong. Um, if you find it easier to make the movement from the wrist, then make it from the wrist. If you find it easier to make it from the elbow, make it from the elbow. So I'm going to guide you step by step through this basic vibrato movement um, and show you how to get your hand moving in this way. Um, the very first and most important thing is to make sure that your violin is comfortably supported on your shoulder. So if you're gripping with your shoulder and lifting your shoulder up to hold your violin in position, then that will tense up your arm and make vibrato harder. And even more important is that you're not gripping, with, uh, gripping the neck between your thumb and your first finger. If you are, it's basically pretty much impossible to do a good vibrato because you can't um, allow the, finger, the first finger to slide. So the absolutely most crucial thing really is that your left hand is free and not gripping the violin so that your first finger is free to make that sliding movement that I just showed you. Um, so the base of the first finger needs to be able to slide along the string. So a good preparatory exercise um, is first of all drop your arm down by your side Make sure you're supporting the violin comfortably um, on your shoulder. Put your hand to the end of the neck and then just make sure that your thumb is relaxed. You can do little circles or tap your thumb against the side. Just make sure it's really nice and relaxed. And then slide the base of your first finger just about a centimetre up and down along the neck like that. So make sure that the, the finger can slide. We need the hand to be both relaxed and flexible to be able to do vibrato. So just do that a few times, dropping your arm down, relaxing your shoulder, finding your left hand position, making sure your thumb and first finger are opposite, making sure that you're not gripping between your thumb and first finger, so no pinching like that, keep that really loose, and make sure that that thumb is free to move, nice and flexible, and that the base of your first finger is free to move. So just make very small movements there to check that your, your hand is flexible. So another useful preparatory exercise is to get used to the feeling of allowing the top joint of the finger to collapse or collapse or just slightly straighten. Um, so up to now you probably or hopefully always played with nice curved fingers with both of the joints nice and curved. 
So that's the correct way to play um, when you're not using vibrato. When you play with vibrato, we actually allow that top joint to sl slightly flatten and that's what lets the finger roll back along the string. Um, and to start with, it can be quite strange um, to uh, get used to the feeling of flattening that joint. So you can just practice that on its own. Um, this is not the vibrato movement, this is just a preparatory exercise to get used to uh, flexing that, uh, that joint. So you could just make a circle between your thumb and your finger and just move that joint like that, and like that, and like that. Or you can do that on the violin. Just put your finger in um, a normal playing position, put your hand in a, no in a normal playing position and allow that joint just to collapse slightly. So this is not the vibrato movement, this is just simply getting used to being relaxed enough to allow those top joints to move. So you can try that with each finger, try it on some different strings. Just learning to let that joint move. So now I'm going to show you the basic vibrato movement and that's the movement that we do in order to flatten that top joint of the finger and let the finger roll back um, along the string so that we're getting that change of pitch that we want for vibrato. So I'm going to break this down into, separate, into some stages for you. So again, check your violin position, make sure you're relaxed. Put your hand to the end of the neck, making sure your thumb and first finger are opposite and very crucially, making sure that the whole of your first finger is over the string. So the side of the first finger just um, next to that crease rests against the side of the fingerboard like that. So don't start with your hand like this. It's a really common mistake. People let the hand drop down sort of um, and, and, and then we really can't reach the notes and vibrato won't work. So the whole of the finger over the string. I don't, not above your knuckle, make sure you don't do that either. Just let that side um, of the finger, where the crease of the finger is, let that rest against the side of the neck. So once you've got that position and you're feeling comfortable, just slide your whole hand up and down the neck by bending the arm from the elbow. So if you can see here, I'm just bending my elbow and sliding the hand up and down. I'm keeping my thumb and first finger together so I'm not doing this set, um, doing them separately. I'm keeping the hand together. So I've still got my hand shape, a nice hand shape, but um, I'm just sliding that hand shape up and down the violin. So imagine you're just polishing the violin. Now do the same thing, but with a finger on the string. I'm gonna use my second finger. Now that's usually the easiest one to start with. Keep the finger curved. Don't try moving the finger independently of the hand. Never do that, that's not vibrato. In a way you can just forget that the finger's even on the string because the important bit is the base of the first finger. That's the bit that you should really focus on. So let the finger just rest on the string but focus on feeling the side of the thumb, the base of the finger sliding up and down the neck and just keep your finger nice and curved. Now, the next step is the, one of the crucial steps. What I'm going to do is reduce the size of this movement and now I'm going to keep my thumb still, so I'm going to carry on sliding the base of my first finger up and down the neck and my second finger will slide along with it. So I'm not moving my finger independently of the hand, I'm just focusing on sliding the base of my first finger along the neck. And I'm going to do this keeping my thumb still. So what we do is we have the normal playing position where the base of the first finger is opposite the thumb and then we slide that back towards the scroll and then return to its position opposite the thumb. So the base of the first finger slides away from the thumb back towards the scroll, taking the finger with it, and then returns to its position opposite the thumb. So I'll just show you from the side. So we've got the thumb and the first finger opposite. I'm sliding the first finger back towards the scroll and then um, returning it to its position opposite the thumb. I'm doing that by moving my, my hand from the elbow, moving my arm from the elbow, like that and my thumb is staying still. So in order to do that, the thumb joint now has to act as a hinge, like this. So the thumb stays still, and the arm and the hand move, like that. So if you see on the violin, I go from moving my thumb and the side of my first finger to just sliding, this, just sliding the base of my first finger. So don't go higher than the thumb because that makes your hand position go a bit funny. So we only go from 
opposite the base of the first finger is opposite the thumb and then pulling back towards the scroll. Opposite the thumb, pulling back towards the scroll, like that. Keeping the finger nice and curved still. So we're not flattening the top joint of the finger yet, we're just keeping it curved, letting it slide along the string. And just feeling that movement of the base of the first finger, just focusing on the base of the first finger, moving from opposite the thumb to back towards the scroll. Like that. <clears throat> so now the final stage is to do this, but to keep the finger still as well. So this is where the flexibility of the top joint of the finger comes in. Have the finger curved on the string. Make sure your thumb and the base of your first finger are opposite. Now what we're going to do is allow the finger to pull back and roll down back along the string as we pull the, first, the base of the first finger back towards the scroll. So that's what the hand looks like with the finger moving and now I'm going to keep the finger still. So you can see that my first finger is doing the same kind of movement. It's still sliding along the side of the neck. But now my top joint of my finger is flattening as I pull the base of my first finger back towards the scroll. And you can see that my finger is rolling back along the string as I do that. So that is the basic vibrato movement. I've got my thumb, the base of my thumb acting as a hinge, allowing the hand to move. The base of my first finger sliding um, back towards the scroll and then back to um, and then returning to, to its usual position opposite the thumb. So it starts opposite the thumb, moves back towards the scroll and then goes back to being opposite the thumb. And my second finger, or whichever finger you're using, um, starts in its usual curved position and as you pull the finger back, it flattens, rolls back along the string and then returns to its curved position, like that. So I'm just going to show you that movement from some different angles. So that's the basic vibrato movement. So the next step is to do this um, vibrato movement with the bow. We're going to do this very slowly so it'll sound a bit like an ambulance, um, but don't worry, as we speed it up um, it will sound more like vibrato, but we first of all just need to get used to uh, making this uh, movement with the bow. So just practice it really, really slowly to start with. So find your in tune note. I'm going to start on a C sharp, second finger C sharp on the A string. Play the note in tune and then let the finger fall back, so slide the base of your first finger towards the scroll. Keep your thumb nice and relaxed and still. Slide the base of the first finger back towards the scroll so that the top joint of the finger flattens and the finger rolls back. Gives you a flat sound. And then just return the finger to its in tune position by sliding the base of the first finger back so that it's opposite the, the thumb again and so that the top joint of the finger is curved again. So we start with a in tune note, the fan falls back and then returns to the in tune note and then back again. I'm just doing two passes per bow stroke at the moment, just doing it really slowly. So practice that. Um, a lot until you can do that really easily. It may take you weeks to get to this point or it may take you 10 minutes. Um, everybody's different. Some people find it easier than others. Um, but try not to move on too quickly. Try and get this movement really comfortable and relaxed before you go on to the next step. And once you can do that, try the, doing the um, same thing but using a dotted rhythm so that the flat note is um, shorter than the in tune note like this. thinking of the movement back to the in tune note as the active movement and allowing the finger to flatten is more of a passive movement so it's passive active passive active passive active really making that movement back to the in tune note an active movement so that you're really um, listening out for the in tune note and again remember we never go sharp of the in tune note vibrato doesn't sound good if we go sharp it sounds very out of tune if we go sharp of the in tune notes so we're always going from the in tune note to a flattened note 
I'm back to the intro note again. Now obviously we can do this with any finger, um, we need to practice it with all the fingers, so do exactly the same things I just described, um, but try it next to your third finger, so... Again, the movement's the same, it's all about moving the base of the first finger back towards the scroll and allowing the finger to flatten. So in a way, it doesn't really matter which finger you've got down, the movement is the same. The movement comes, um, is about moving, the, sliding the base of the first finger. So practice that with all the fingers and on all the strings. So now I'm going to talk about speeding up the vibrato movement. Um, we've talked about the basic vibrato movement and we've made a very wide um, vibrato. Um, now we want to make that vibrato narrower um, so that it sounds nicer um, and speed it up. So I'm going to set my metronome to um, 60 and I'm going to play two vibrato pulses for each click like this. I'm going to play um, uh, four vibrato pulses per bow stroke. So it will go like this. So I'm still I'm vibrating in a dotted rhythm, just like I was at the um, in the previous exercise. But now I'm reducing the movement of the finger, so I'm not completely flattening the top joint of the finger, I'm just partially flattening it, and the finger's now not rolling as much as it was. So this makes it sound a bit more tasteful, a bit more like a real vibrato. So when you can do it um, easily at um, a pulse of 60, doing two, um, two vibrato pulses to each um, beat, speed up your metronome, maybe go up I'm going to go up to 80, but you might want to go up um, more gradually than that. Now I'm going to do um, more vibrato pulses in each bow stroke, now that I'm going a bit faster. So I'll do six uh, vibrato pulses. So still going for a dotted rhythm kind of pattern. Then you can do that, speed it up a little bit more. I'm going to go up to 100. Now I'm going to do eight pulses per bow stroke. Now I'm going to speed it up a little bit more. It gets a bit tricky to count the pulses um, the faster you go, but um, do your best. I'm going to play uh, eight pulses now. So gradually speed it up and make it narrow, narrower as you speed it up until you can get something that sounds a bit more like real vibrato, something like this. So it should sound really, um, you shouldn't be able to hear the individual pulses so much as just having an overall effect of a vibration. Now you can make that vibrato wider or narrower depending on the kind of music you're playing. So you might want to play a big wide vibrato for romantic music. Or um, a more subtle vibrato for classical music. kind of vibrato that, you, that you're using depending on the music that you're playing. Um, to play a wider vibrato, the movement is wider, you might want to put the finger slightly flatter on the string and make the movement bigger. For a narrow, narrower vibrato, try putting the finger a little bit more on its tip and make the movement less wide. So when you really get the hang of this, you can experiment with different kinds of vibrato and different sounds, um, but take it very steadily, don't try and do it all in one go. Um, just practice the exercises until they feel easy and really work on being relaxed and flexible. <laughs>